1620, a converted merchant vessel furrows the Atlantic for 67 days, and a new world lives. The year is 1909. At Fort Myer, Virginia, the world's first military flyer raises itself by its own power. The Wright brothers have made time airborne. 18 years later, Charles Lindbergh flies to the old world in 33 and one half hours, becomes the first intercontinental emissary of the new air age. The time is today. The airplane has made the two worlds one, and it is the mission of these young men to help keep that world free. They are cadets of the Civil Air Patrol, the official auxiliary of the United States Air Force. They are part of the American Tension of a unique program in which 22 nations participate annually. They are ambassadors with wings. Jimmy Stewart. Just six days before Pearl Harbor, the Congress of the United States created the Civil Air Patrol and gave wings to the nation's civilian defense efforts. Throughout the war, privately owned CAP planes flew volunteer submarine patrol over the Atlantic and the Caribbean coasts. The official auxiliary, the domestic right arm of the United States Air Force since May 1948, CAP senior members fly 77% of all search and rescue missions authorized by the Air Force. CAP's cadet aviation education program is not only a powerful deterrent to juvenile delinquency, but a major factor in the future of aviation and the defense of freedom. In 1,200 CAP squadrons, over 36,000 teenagers are becoming acquainted with the opportunities, the problems, the concepts of living in the air age. The cadet program includes everything from close order drill to the annual jet orientation course at Perrin Air Force Base, Sherman, Texas. For a solid week, Air Force training experts instruct the young man in the use of the T-33 shooting star ejection seat, engineering, flying safety. The cadets planned and plotted their own cross-country mission. They computed speed, time over checkpoints, and the various navigational aids necessary to get to their destination and return. Now, under the guidance of Air Force flight instructors, they navigate the shooting stars themselves and actually handle the controls. The jet orientation course is one of the many honor programs of the Civil Air Patrol. Cadets who complete it are one step closer to a most important CAP activity, the International Air Cadet Exchange Program, in which some 145 American cadets participate each summer with a like number of young men from 21 nations of the free world. This is Matt's trip number MA-61 from Andrews Air Force Base, Washington, D.C. Its destination is London International Airport. For the boys aboard, one month in England. The payoff of at least 18 months of earnest, dedicated training. The next meal will be served on English soil. But there's nothing wrong with this service, or the food either. This flight is London bound, but other planes of the military air transport service will deliver the CAP cadets to 14 European countries. The free world awaits our ambassadors with wings. The Matt's plane banks, and London is a few tingling moments away. the London of the Thames, and across it, Parliament. The London that has listened to the booming voice of Big Ben for a hundred years. Trafalgar Square, the heart of London.
that the American cadets quickly become a part of all that is England. Proudly they wear the Air Force blue with their distinctive CAP insignia as they are reviewed by Air Marshal Sir Douglas McFadden, Commander-in-Chief of the Home Command of the Royal Air Force. At Dover, American cadets visit Hawkinge RAF base in keeping with the purpose of the International Air Cadet Exchange, and that is international goodwill and the furtherance of aviation education. Hawkinge was the base of the gritty Spitfires. Piccadilly Circus is the hub of the British Empire. It is to London what Times Square is to New York. It is a good distance from Buckingham Palace and the young ambassadors have an important date to keep there. Belgium, American cadets find an incredible concentration of history. This is Brussels, the capital. And nine miles to the south is the battlefield of Waterloo. The Grand Place in the center of Brussels is considered one of the finest monuments of medieval and Renaissance architecture in the world. But Brussels is not only history. It's a vigorous, industrial, cultural, and commercial center, most of it modern. The cadets discover that breakfast in the suburbs is not unlike breakfast back home. The food is as good, the milk is refreshing, and the table talk just as much fun. Cadets also discover that the bicycle is more than a popular mode of transportation. Here, as it is all over the continent, bicycling is a sport. It's fast, exciting, and sometimes dangerous. Cadets from Fairbanks, Alaska to Fort Worth, Texas spend four weeks in Belgium as ambassadors of goodwill on a mission of brotherhood. American cadets on a four-week tour of France are overwhelmed by the Seine, Paris. The Paris Opera, home of the French Grand Opera since the 19th century. The impressive Madeleine, one of the great churches of the city. Around the Place de la Concorde, the young Americans see the famous obelisk. Fountains, the palatial buildings. Notre Dame is unforgettable, a masterpiece of early Gothic architecture. Down the tree-lined Champs-Élysées, the Arc de Triomphe comes into view. The City of Light has touched the lives of the American cadets and they'll never be the same. Cadets visiting Portugal gain a new appreciation of this country as the leader in navigational exploration since the time of Vasco da Gama. From Lisbon, the young Americans journey to the warm southern province of Alhaba and enjoy the old circle dance. This is Spain. The CAP cadet from San Angelo, Texas sees the bull in a new role.
But more than any single event, any historical site, it's the music of Spain which will be remembered by the young ambassador. From Spain, it's over 2,000 miles across the history of the Mediterranean to Ankara, the capital of the Republic of Turkey. American cadets are welcomed by the mayor and are off on a four-week tour. Ankara was a small town, little known to the rest of the world, when in 1923, Kemal Ataturk, the founder of modern Turkey, made it the capital and transferred the government from Istanbul. This is his memorial. One of the youngest nations in the International Air Cadet Exchange is the New Republic of Israel. In the cradle of two of the world's great religions, American cadets seem to travel in time as well as miles. From Jerusalem, it's only 10 minutes by air to the modern city of Tel Aviv. The kingdom of Greece is one of the oldest lands visited by the American cadets. From this square, the modern capital looks much like any other big city. But not too far from here, cadets see another Athens. The Athens of Homer, Aristotle, Alexander the Great. 650 miles from Athens, are the remains of the civilization which swallowed Greece and dominated the Mediterranean Sea for 200 years. American cadets land at Rome and are welcomed by the high-ranking officers of the Italian Air Force. At the foot of Mount Vesuvius lies Pompeii, battered by earthquake in 63 AD and buried by the eruption of Vesuvius 16 years later. The young Americans walk among the almost perfectly preserved ruins. The famous Caserta Technical School is located outside Naples. And it's here that the cadets participate in one of the prime functions of the international program. The furtherance of aviation through the exchange of information among free peoples. Thousands of feet high, the Western Alps separate Italy and Switzerland. Switzerland's Lake Lucerne is one of the most beautiful in the world. Special guests of the Swiss government, the American cadets from Maine and Mississippi, Louisiana, Utah, and South Dakota spend four delightful weeks in this land of lakes and towering mountains. On the way back to Zurich, the young cadets enjoy lunch and more of the spectacular scenery of this delightful country. Rising in central Switzerland, the Rhine flows over 820 miles. Commercially, it's Europe's most important river. American cadets enjoy a boat ride up the Rhine to Dusseldorf. They see the legendary castle ruins of Ehrenfels and the Mouse Tower. Gliding is a popular sport in Germany, with several hundred clubs operating in 25 major areas of the country. The young ambassadors get an opportunity to try out their wings over the idyllic German countryside. This is the first year of West Germany's participation in the International Air Cadet Exchange, and Chancellor Konrad Adenauer personally greets our cadets at his residence in Bonn. From Bonn, Germany, it's 4,200 miles to Washington, D.C. Air-minded young men from 21 nations of the free world are welcomed by Vice President Richard Nixon. 145 boys from many of the cities and towns which our cadets are visiting at this very moment now become special guests of the United States government. In a whirl of sightseeing, the ambassadors with wings cover the capital of the United States. The 
Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial. For three weeks, the free world's finest young men see the face of America and meet the people and talk about airplanes. During their stay in the nation's capital, they're invited to a baseball game. Together, they march into Griffith Stadium. The Washington Senators are at home, and third baseman Eddie Yost takes time out before the game to give a boy from Israel a few pointers. The visiting cadets are part of an audience of thousands as the United States Air Force puts on a show at Andrews Field. By. This is the 10th anniversary of the International Air Cadet Exchange Program. Since 1948, cadets of the United States Civil Air Patrol have gone abroad and members of CAP's counterparts in four continents have come here. The old barnstorming days are recalled in a comedy sequence. and German boys see one of the finest dairies in the United States, the Lehigh Valley Cooperative in Allentown, Pennsylvania. While over 3,500 miles away, American cadets are touring a dairy in Holland, which looks very much like any large dairy back home. This is the world-famous Steravita operation in Dordrecht supplier of fresh milk to NATO and the American forces in Europe. Dutch boys and American boys spend a month in each other's country as a member of the International Air Cadet Exchange Program. And goodwill between the two nations reaches a new height. <laughs> achieves a new dimension. Her Majesty Queen Juliana receives the ambassadors with wings at the royal residence in The Hague. Southernmost of the Scandinavian countries is the Kingdom of Denmark. Friedrichsborg Castle across the Slotso Lake is one of the loveliest sights in Northern Europe. Now a museum, the castle chapel was the scene of many a coronation. CAP members from every region of the United States walk where Danish kings have walked since the 17th century. In 1943, Copenhagen became the capital of Denmark. Wonderful Copenhagen is a major commercial, industrial, and cultural center. It's the heart and the soul of this land. The Kingdom of Norway welcomes the visiting CAP cadets with the Rhinelander Folk Dance.
paper and pulp production is one of Norway's chief industries. Almost 25% of this country is covered with forests. While Norwegian members of the Air Cadet Exchange are touring Miami Beach, the young Americans visit a paper mill far to the north. A leader in jet aviation, Sweden's Air Force is among the world's finest. The largest Scandinavian country stages an air show for the ambassadors with wings. The J-35 Dragon looks very much like our own F-102A interceptor. Swedish jets perform beautifully for the touring Americans. After the show, the American cadets are honored at a dinner given by the officers and the men of the Royal Swedish Air Force. Smorgasbord is famous the world over, but Swedish crayfish is pretty good too. And there's nothing quite like an American hot dog to a foreign cadet visiting Times Square in New York for the first time. Members of aero groups of 21 nations of the free world enjoy a four-day tour of the largest city in the United States. From the Battery in Lower Manhattan, they take the Staten Island Ferry to see the city's most inspiring national monument, the beautiful Lady of New York Harbor, the Statue of Liberty, a gift from the freedom-loving people of France. American cadets from eight wings of the Civil Air Patrol salute the departing ambassadors with wings. Down the Avenue of the Americas, the young airmen and airwomen march. Into Rockefeller Plaza, they marched to participate in the finals of the National Drill Competition, another of the special honor programs of the Civil Air Patrol. Girls from Iowa enter and draw applause from thousands of spectators. Boys from Michigan are finalists for the second straight year. Air Force ranks include more than 32,000 former cadets. The New York wing drill team performs flawlessly. The Charter of the United Nations sets forth the purposes of the UN as the maintenance of international peace and security, the development of friendly relations between states, the achievement of cooperation in solving international economic, social, cultural, and humanitarian problems. The young men of the International Air Cadet Exchange have made and will continue to make an impressive contribution to the concept of world peace. They are ambassadors with wings.